Welcome to another Lapis Guides Introduction to QGIS tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about georeferencing. Georeferencing is something that's very useful uh, for all sorts of different types of applications. But basically what we're doing is we're taking either a physical map that we've scanned onto a computer or maybe we've downloaded from a website um, and it doesn't have any coordinates embedded in the file but we want to be able to place it in QGIS so that we can show data on top of it. Like, so it could be a physical map, um, something from paper that we've scanned. It could be a digital file. It could also be uh, maybe a photograph from uh, aerial photography from earlier before we had satellite imagery. Uh, it could also be a drone uh, imagery as well. Uh, so basically what this can do for you is you can look at um, maps from quite a long time ago. You can look at aerial photography from quite a long time ago, and you can compare it with current things, uh, where now we have satellite imagery where we can use that, and we can compare the two to see if there's changes or differences. Uh, we can create very accurate, very detailed maps of, of regions that we're working on with a project. Uh, perhaps we're doing, we're doing some research in the mountains and we want to get a very accurate image. Uh, we can use a drone to do a flyover, take a series of aerial images, we can stitch those together, and then we can georeference that on the computer so that we can use that instead of a satellite image. It gives us very accurate, uh, detailed images, and it also gives us an image on the specific day that we're doing our research as well, so that we're not limited to a period in time when the satellite flew over our study zone. It also eliminates cloud cover, which can also be an issue with satellite imagery. So today we're going to go through and we're going to look at how to georeference a physical map and then also um, an old uh, aerial photograph from a spy plane. Okay, we're going to start out with the map. And I've got an uh, old map of what is now called Bishkek. At the time it was called Frunze. This is the capital of Kyrgyzstan. And um, the link is in the description um, and you can you can follow along with this as well. Uh, this is just open on, it's just a regular image file, um, it's just a JPEG, and, you know, we can open this in QGIS, but it's not going to do anything for us because it has no coordinates associated with the actual file. So what we need to do is we need to, well, we need to georeference it, right? So we can we can zoom in a little bit on this this thing, and we can see a couple of locations where We've got some coordinates with some actual uh, latitude and longitude. Generally, these old Soviet maps have a couple spots that have these things. Usually one somewhere in the middle. And then on each corner, there's also the latitude longitude. Uh, you'll also notice there's a grid along the top with numbers. Uh, these do not mean anything in terms of latitude and longitude. This is often something that people get confused with when they're using uh, certain maps uh, that may have a grid system to go with them. Just because there's numbers along a grid does not mean that that is your coordinates. It's not latitude and longitude, so just make sure that uh, you're aware of that depending on what maps that you're trying to do your reference. Not all numbers mean anything for you. So why don't we bring this into QGIS and we'll see how to do some georeferencing. So the first thing that we need to do in QGIS is we need to make sure that our georeferencing plugin is uh, both installed and active. So you just need to go in to your manage and install plugins. And we're just going to search for geo, georeferencer GDAL, GDAL. All right, and you're going to make sure that this one is installed and active. Okay. So that's the first thing we need to do. Then we're going to go to Raster Georeferencer, bring up a new window, and we're just going to choose the file that we want to georeference. Great, and what I always do is I go and deal with my settings first. So go into Settings, Transformation Settings. You want to make sure that you have Thin Plate Spline chosen, Nearest Neighbor chosen. Uh, work in 4326 because it's going to give you the most options for later. Okay. And um, what we want to do is we want to create an output raster. We want to be able to save this as a georeferenced file, obviously, because that's what we're doing. Uh, and so we want to make sure that the name shows that it is georeferenced. 
So I'm going to just leave it as Soviet map of Bishkek and region underscore gr or georeferenced. Okay, and I'm going to save that in the right location. And so that's going to get saved there. Don't worry about any of the rest of this stuff. Um, just make sure that those three are the way that we have them and that you have an output file selected. Okay. All right, so now the next thing that we need to work on is we need to actually tell it where coordinates are. Now this map makes that very easy because we actually have coordinates on the map. All right, so we can zoom into this one, right? And we, we want to make sure that this is selected. This is our add point tool. And so we're going to add a point right here. Okay, now our X axis and our Y axis Right. This is a uh, this is another tricky point that people often get incorrect. Um, our x-axis is uh, the things going along the east and west, right? And the nor the y-axis is things going north and south. Now, my x-axis is always this number, seventy four forty five, when we're looking at when we're looking at, at Kyrgyzstan. Um, so we're going to put in 74, 45, and then 00. zero. And our latitude, our north-south, right, our latitude is moving up and down along the y-axis is 4250. 4250, 00. Okay, we're just going to click OK. And now it's created a point right there. Okay, it's added that in. And to georeference something, you need to do at least three. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do each corner. All right, so now I've got my five points. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. All right, five is a great number. Uh, the more points you have, the more accurate your georeferencing is going to be, as long as your points are accurate. All right, so you've got, uh, I've got my five points here. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to press play. All right, and that's going to georeference this map. It's going to add it onto my map canvas. Great, so here's my map. And it doesn't look any different at this point. Okay, but what I can do is I can go to web, put an open layer map underneath there. Okay, and I'm going to make this a little bit transparent so that I can see through. So you can see the map that we have corresponds with the streets on open source street map. Um, and so th this is this is georeference now. We can use this. Um, for all sorts of different things. So that's one way to do it when you do have coordinates on corners or specific locations on the map when you have actual coordinates. Uh, the next thing that we're going to look at, we're going to take an old image from a 1961 flyover from a spy plane uh, that, that was released to the public in 1996, I believe. So for the next one, I'm going to start with a Bing aerial map and you'll see why we need to do that. Uh, we're going to go in and we're going to Open up our raster georeferencer. All right, we're going to choose the correct file. All right, and obviously, as you can see, this spy plane image does not have coordinates associated with it in any way. On our map, we had some coordinates written out for satellite imagery that's not georeferenced, for spy plane imagery or drone or whatever kind of actual photographic imagery that you have that doesn't have coordinates, the only other way is to match locations on that image with locations on a map. All right. Uh, one thing that we need to make sure that we do is we need to check to see what coordinate system we're using here, and we can see that down here. So Bing is using uh, 3857, so we just need to match that in our settings. All right, so we need to choose 3857. Let me save that, load in QJS when done. All right, great. So um, this area down here is Bishkek, and we can zoom in on it. And we can see some things that we're familiar with. 
uh, like this is the Botanic Garden on Gorkova Manas. Uh, this is a region of the city called Robochi Garadok. There are some parts that we are familiar with we can recognize if we zoom in on the Bing aerial map. So we can zoom in on this map and we can see some of those same spots. Right, we can see this circular structure here. We can see uh, the Botanic Garden. But one thing that you'll really quickly notice is that this image is flipped over. It's south is on the top and north is on the bottom compared with a regular map image where north is on the top and south is on the bottom. And so we need to take that into account while we're georeferencing so that we can find the right locations. Um, also with a map or a file this large, we don't want to limit ourselves to just a few spots in a small area here where we're familiar with it, we need to find some places uh, in other parts of the map as well, which can take a little while. Um, it, can, it can be a little bit challenging, but let's start with something that's easy and recognizable. All right, so we've got this circle, circular area here, and we can just choose the central point. We're gonna click on it just like we did in the last one, but this time we don't have coordinates that we can put in here. And so what we need to choose instead is from map canvas. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to click the same spot on this map. All right, so we just need to find that same location and click. It'll fill in the coordinates for us, press OK, and now it's added a dot for us here. And remember, we need to have at least four. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, I'm going to find a few more spots. All right, so I've got my points selected here got a eh, pretty decent spread because there wasn't a lot going on in Bishkek area at the time in 1961 uh, there's not a lot of reference points over here unless you can work with the actual terrain which can be a bit, a bit challenging but let's press go and see what happens All right, so there we've got our map. All right, and you can see it's spread out across where it's supposed to be. So let's zoom in here. We'll make this a bit transparent. And we can see that that fits right on over top. Super. So now we know that this map is in the right spot. Now it's actually a map. It's not just an image. It's a map now uh, because it has coordinates with it. And so we can put data points on top. We could um, we could go in here and we could uh, map out the size of Bishkek in 1961. Um, you know, we could do a whole lot of things with this as a result of having it now with coordinates placed on the globe in the right location. So sometimes this can be a little bit tricky because especially with older older images where a lot has changed, it can be very challenging to find the locations that match up, uh, but can also be very useful because it can allow us to look far back in time uh, to see uh, interesting things such as burial mounds. All right, this is a burial mound. Um, that uh, was still visible in 1961 and let's see where it is now what has happened to it now it is now underneath some housing development All right, so we can look at how has the landscape changed okay what has archaeological sites what has happened to those over time um, you know there, there's different things that we can use this kind of uh, technology for so georeferencing older images, older maps, things like that can, can be used for a variety of different ways. And uh, hopefully this tutorial will help you be able to figure out how to georeference uh, either maps, old maps, or old aerial photography, or even drone, drone photographs that you take yourself.